Christ is truly worthy of your praise. Uh, every day he's worthy of your praise. But today is the day that he rose from the dead and our foundation lays upon that promise. And so uh, this is the day of great worship unto him outside the box. Uh, praise unto God. I mean, we can't get out there and, 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 and praise together, but this is a time that you can find you a good spot or uh, a listening area where you can put your praise and worship on and uh, just give God uh, the praise that is due him. So we're going to open in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for this this great day. This, this is an awesome day, Lord God. A day that uh, you went and paid a price, Lord God, that uh, you didn't even own, but there was nothing that we could do. And so, Father, we thank you uh, for all that you've done, all that you have accomplished for us, all that you have given us, all this, this life that is filled with uh, the promises of God, uh, Lord, that we could be anything that you have called us to be, Lord Jesus, by your uh, will, by your power, by your strength. And so, Lord God, I pray as I uh, go into this word, Lord God, that uh, we are able to receive exactly what it is you want each one of us to receive, Lord. And we know your word will not return void. And we thank you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. So my topic today is, this is why Jesus is worthy of all praise. This is why Jesus is worthy of all praise. And I'll be coming to you from the book of Mark chapter 15 and 16. Mark chapter 15 and 16. But here's a verse I, I, I want to give to you. And this is coming from Psalms 147 uh, verses 1 and 7. And it says, Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant and fitting to praise Him. And that was uh, Psalms uh, 147 1. But Verse 7 says, sing to the Lord with grateful praise. Make music to our God on the harp. And uh, this, is, this is the day that if you, as you meditate on the things that Christ did and uh, all that he went through for us, uh, this is a day of just opening up your mouth, opening up your heart, and, and giving him great praise. Even in the midst of all of this that's going on, all the darkness that's going on uh, in the world right now, he is still worthy of great praise. <laughs> this is this this, this is it. <laughs> this is it. You know, it's, the scripture talking about uh, talks about a testing of your faith, and uh, this is the time that a lot of the saints are being tested. In their faith, and is uh, are you going to be able to stand? Are you still able to praise Him? Or uh, has fear moved in, and uh, you know, and just kind of moved your praises out? You know, and has fear made itself bigger than uh, God in your life? And uh, so I hope not at this time, but that we could continue to go forth. That uh, He is so rooted in your heart. I pray that He is so rooted in your heart at this time. That nothing is going to move him out of your life, out of your heart, out of your spirit. And that uh, you're staying in tune with the Holy Spirit. You're continuing your reading. You're continuing your prayer. You're continuing your intercessory prayer time. Because uh, now all of that is due. Now all of that is, is really needed. Uh, all the saints to uh, be on their knees. All the saints coming before the throne and 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 uh, lifting up these situations and and things so that uh, this thing would soon come to an end. Amen. Because our God knows what's going on. So I don't want you to think that um, in, any of this is taking him by surprise, but because it hasn't. He he sees it. He knows it. Um, he knows what uh, hurt feels like. He knows. Uh, uh, losing a loved one feels like uh, he lost his friend uh, Lazarus, Lazarus but the thing about it is uh, he uh, uh, raised Lazarus from the dead and uh, any of our loved ones who have died in Christ they're going to rise again so we, we have great hope 
We, we have great hope. Even during this time, we have to stay separated from one another uh, for a few weeks, months, uh, uh, whatever, that uh, we'll all be able to come out and join each other again. With those that have went to heaven, uh, we miss being with them, but we will be able to be with them again. Uh, that is a promise uh, that God has for us, and we will be able to uh, 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 recognize them and fellowship with them. Uh, life is not over. Amen? As a matter of fact, you get to heaven, life is just really beginning. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let me get there with you in Mark 15. And Jesus is before Pilate. And it says, very early in the morning, the chief priest, the elder, the teachers of the law, and the whole Sanhedrin made their plans. They they come together and they, they gotta we gotta do something with this Jesus. And, you know, he just can't keep going on like this and and uh, we gotta get rid of him. And so they they bound Jesus and led him away and handed him over to Pilate. And then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Uh, Jesus replied, you have said so. You know, Jesus doesn't waste any words and what he says he means. And so he said, you, you said so. And so the chief priest accused him of uh, many things. Now that is something because the chief priest, what a, a, a position of the Levitical uh, uh, priesthood that they come from, such a, a heritage that should be passed on and passed on in their duties of righteousness and of justice and, and uh, doing the things that God has set forth for them to do in righteousness and in truth. And they know what judgment is, is about and, uh, and all that, but all this falsehood that the chief priests were uh, uh, bringing against Jesus. And, and it's something when you could be in a position, you could be a leader, but be blind to the truth. Be blind to the truth of what uh, God wants you to do or the things that God is calling you to do you, you're blind to it and so other things can come in that pride can come in and you being more prideful than doing the works of God or being sensitive to the things that God wants you to be sensitive to so that you could uh, continue to do the duties in righteousness and that God wants you to do and in truth you know in their uh, um, dress and they, they had something, uh, um, I can't think of the name right now, but it says, unto the Lord. You know, they, they were uh, dedicated unto the Lord. They carried the, uh, uh, the tribes on their chest. And so they are supposed to be close to the Lord. There's these, the dress and everything was to be a reminder to them that I am the one that's chosen in this position by God uh, to lead the people, to guide the people. But now they're accusing Jesus of all this falsehood. <laughs> so again, Pilate asked him, aren't you going to answer all these accusations that these people are saying about you? See how many things they are accusing you of? And, and, and it's not true. You know, I mean, uh, you know, you maybe have uh, fallen into a situation before or maybe in a position like that now where people are accusing you of things and you're innocent of it. You, you didn't do any of those things. So Jesus knows how you feel if you're going through something like that or if you've been through something like that. You know, he can identify with, being, with someone who's been lied on. Someone who's been backstabbed. He, he, can, he can sympathize with that. He knows how that feels, especially of people that are supposed to be close to you. And if they turn their back on you and they accuse you of lies and, 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 uh, and different things like that, he can identify with that. People that are supposed to be the leaders uh, of God's people, and uh, they're lying on Jesus. The one that they're, they're uh, uh, in position to uh, worship and honor and to lead the people into truth, um, they're lying. Hmm. Amazing. But Jesus still made no reply, and Pilate was amazed. That, that is a strength that Jesus was showing. Even in all of this that was going on in his life at this time, he was still able to show this strength. 
uh, still being obedient to the Father. I it still made up in his mind that he's going to finish this thing, and he's going to finish this thing very well. Amen. He's going to do it because he had you in mind. He had me in mind. And uh, thank God that uh, he didn't open up his mouth because we know the power that's in his mouth. You know, when the, the soldiers came up on him, and when he said that uh, who he is, they fell. So, you know, just for Jesus to open up his mouth uh, could put, them, put their life in danger. <laughs> so a lot of this, he didn't open up his mouth. Thank God that he didn't open up his mouth. Because they would have been in trouble. He is the God who answers by fire. Hallelujah. But Jesus, verse 5, but Jesus still made no reply as, as Pilate was amazed. Now it was the custom at the festival to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionists who had committed murder in the uprising. And the crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. See, when they, the, uh, all these leaders got these people all revved up and everything, and so now they want, uh, uh, let's keep the custom. They know what the custom was, and the custom is, is to, uh, uh, at this time, you're able to release uh, uh, one person. And so uh, they rather have uh, Barabbas who was a person in a, that was a leader in a group that was coming against the government. It was coming against, you know, the, the elders and, and all. So uh, this uprising that he had going forth. And so um, they they rather have the murderer than the one who came to give them life Amen. and to give them an abundant life. So th it's, just, it, it, it's just crazy how you could be praised one day, and then less than 24 hours, you uh, you know, people are already against you. Amen. But the enemy is always working. He's always doing something behind the scenes. He's always trying to uh, get get to God's people. He's always trying to bring in the evil and the wicked and the foolishness. He's always trying to tear down the good and, and bring in the unclean or the unrighteous. And set the, those things up because he wants to be in, he wants to have control. He wants to be in charge. He doesn't want uh, Christ to, to receive any of the glory or the honor or the praise. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So it is, it's, it's really amazing. They want Barabbas. And then in the Old Testament, it said, Choose today. What do you want? You want blessings or curses? You want know, you know life or you want death? Well, they rather, hey, we we uh, we, we choose death. <laughs> it's basically what they said. We, we choose death. But not knowing that God had already made a way, that he's making a way for uh, for us to be saved. He's making a way for us to be, to have life because truly they didn't know what they were doing. They, you know, they thinking that they're doing something to shut this thing down, to, to, to get this light uh, uh, off this earth, this light that's walking around in darkness and, and speaking truth and healing people and delivering people, and they want to shut that light out, and uh, that's just what's going to happen. But they were playing right into the hands of the king. Amen. <laughs> Verse 9, do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews, asked Pilate, knowing it was out of self-interest that the the chief priest had handed Jesus over to them. He could see through it. He had enough discernment to see the, what they were trying to do. And then he's playing this little game with them. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have Pilate uh, release Barabbas instead. Mm -hmm. They are doing that. Uh, they're, they're own, uh, for their own gain. I, they want to uh, uh, shut the mouths of Christ. And you can find that when people don't want to go to the next level, they want to. They don't want to um, 
I do the things of Christ. I do the things in righteousness. They want to keep the old ways. They want to uh, keep a religious spirit or something like that. They, they come up against you and come up against you hard. No, they ain't going to try and do something to get you out of your position. When, you know, you're thinking about uh, what's right for everybody. And let's go to another level in our worship, in our praise, in our teaching, in our ways of God. Let's go to another level. You know, amen, that's righteous, that's in line also with the Holy Spirit. Not just doing things because you want to do things, but doing things because you feel that this is the time and this is the season that God is calling you uh, to come out of the box. Amen? amen? Mm -hmm. So well, what shall I do then with the one you call the king of the Jews, Pilate asked him. Crucify him, they shouted. But why? What crime has he committed? Asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder. They didn't want to answer that. There was no answer for it. No, nothing constructive. No constructive answer. Not, they have given out all the lies. So while he's asking questions, they get louder and louder with their shouts of crucifying him. So that they, they could take Pilate off of his thoughts. And so uh, wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate did, uh, he released Barabbas to them. And he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. So he continued to go on with, uh, you know, with the, the system, the way that they do things. He had Jesus flogged. That was the next step, you know, after the judgment, to have him beaten and then to hand him over to be crucified. Let's go on with this. So this is... You know, this satisfies the people. It's always the people. It's, it's uh, the percentage of the people, you know. And we have to be careful of that, you know. You have to really uh, examine things. You really search out a matter and make sure, you know, is this of God? Is this the way that, that we're to go? Is this the way we're to do this? Because just going with the crowd doesn't make it right. Just going with that leader uh, uh, that's got a loud voice doesn't make it right. Amen. It doesn't make it right. Amen. Amen. But we know Jeremiah went through some stuff. Because his voice was going against, you know, the leaders. And he's trying to tell, the Jeremiah was trying to tell him what God is saying. What God is saying. Is, is, it is it's telling them to go on and go into captivity. Go on and go. I, I still got you. I got you. No harm is going to come to you. But this is this this is me. I'm directing you to go and go with the uh, go with them. But people, now that doesn't look like God. That doesn't seem like God. Uh, you know, he he only acts in one way, but not observing the times. The Bible says that you can observe the times as far as it comes the weather. Amen. But as far as it comes to spiritual things, you're not observing what's going on. You're not seeing what's going on. So we got to be in this day and time observant of the spiritual things. Of the spiritual things. That fleshly thing is, it is so much flesh and carnality and all of this that's going on right now. We got to get to the Spirit. We got to get with the Holy Spirit and see what is going on. We got to get in the Word, and the Word is the truth, and it is the Spirit. And so we have to get in there. We got to search out a matter. That's what the Bereans were known for in the book of Acts. And, you know, they would go and they hear, uh, they heard about uh, uh, the gospel and all of this and the different things that was going on. But they, they not only uh, uh, heard it, but they would go and search out a matter. Amen. You can take that. Somebody give you a word. You can take it. You can, you can put that on a shelf and search it out. Seek it out. You know. So that you will not be led astray. Amen. There's nothing wrong with searching out a matter. And you don't have to, you know, get all up in somebody's face and saying, oh, you know, well, I, I, don't, I don't receive this. I don't. Do this. No, just go and search it out. Amen. Search out a matter. Yes. The soldiers led Jesus away into the palace and called together the whole company of soldiers. Mm -hmm. They put a purple robe on him, mm -hmm. then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. And they began to call out to him, Hail, King of the Jews. 
Again and again, they struck him on the head with a staff and spit on him. How low, <laughs> is it saying, how low can you go? This one man Amen. didn't take all that. Didn't take all that. Then we're going to uh, do this for hours, uh, 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 flogging somebody, spitting on somebody, hitting them with a staff, and doing all these things. Mm -hmm. Are they, they uh, the, these soldiers, what kind of heart did they have? Is this, the, is this their normal way of, of doing people, of treating people? That you know that they are going to be crucified. But is this the way that, that, that you do that? The, the shame and all the, not only just the shame, but the pain, the humiliation that they brought on a person, the degrading. So we have to be careful when we when we are degrading somebody and, and we're talking about somebody and all that, you know, uh, 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 think about just uh, sometimes you should be in prayer for that person. You don't have to just uh, 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 run that person through, run that person down. Pray about that person. Pray, uh, 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 lift that person up before the throne. Pray for that person. Because you don't know if God if God is finished with that person. You don't know what that person is, uh, is going to be or who that person is in God's eye. So uh, it, it's just, it, you know, to put them in a robe and, and to do all these things like, uh, like wild people, um, so degrading. And then they call him, but they call it him. Hell, king of the Jews. Yeah, that's right. Amen. That's right. They think they're mocking him and putting him down, but that is the truth. Amen. It was the truth. <laughs> uh, but not in their hearts and not in their minds. But just because it wasn't in their hearts and not in their minds, then uh, 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 was not making it true. It still was true because he's king of kings and lord of lords and god of gods. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Wow. This is just, uh, and verse 20. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put uh, his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. To have the strength. Uh, 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 Jesus had strength. I'm telling you. Uh, to go through all of that. Yep. But to still... Uh, not to open his mouth. Not to open his mouth. I mean, um, the power, the strength to do that. To you know, because what's in our heart when we when we come under a stress or hard times or something that's really close to us hit us emotionally. What's in the heart is going to come out. So this is another way of letting us see how much he loved mankind. That he didn't say anything uh, which protected, which protected us, which protected them. Wow. Amazing. Amen. There's a certain man for Cyrene, Simon. The father of Alexander and Rufus was passing by on his way in from the country. And uh, they forced him to carry the cross. They forced him to carry the cross. He, he's coming in, you know, from out there in the countryside and coming through, maybe not knowing what all is going, going on. And they ended up having him to, to carry the cross. But it went down in the book's. It went down in the book of Christ, the holy book of, of, of him, and it made sure to let you know the father of Alexander and Rufus, who he was, that he uh, helped to carry the cross. Even though he was forced to carry the cross, nobody wants to carry a cross. Nobody wants to carry a cross. Because with that cross, I mean, all of that that came with it, the shame and all that, and then he's coming in not knowing. He's coming in from the countryside not knowing what all is going on. And somebody just automatically put you out there, and now you, 
you out there carrying this cross. But I'm sure after all of that blew over, and for him to think about Christ, and that I was able to step in mm -hmm. and carry the cross, carry the cross. I was able to come in alongside Christ and carry the cross. And that's what he calls us to do, to come in mm -hmm. and carry our cross. Daily, pick up your cross, he said, and follow me. And, and he, this man, doing his own thing, coming through, and he was forced to uh, uh, carry the cross, to help carry the cross. And, and uh, what a praise, what an honor, what, you know, to, to, of God's son to be able to do this, for God's son to do this, to come alongside him when he is going to the cross to save the world. He is going to a death to save the world. Amen. When the woman went to Jesus with the alabaster jar, and she began to uh, uh, wipe his feet and the praise and putting perfume on him and, 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 the, and said what she has done will be remembered. It will be spoken of. That was a beautiful thing that was done in worship unto Christ, unto getting him prepared. Amen. This expensive cologne, expensive cologne that she put on him. That he could smell going down the Via Della Rosa. He could smell it. Amen. In the midst of the, uh, of the pain, he could smell this, this perfume. And say our prayers are like perfume. He could be reminded that there are some that are praying for me. There are some that are Amen. standing with me. He could be reminded of the intercessor. Because see, everybody there wasn't against him. Some were just in fear. They, could, they didn't come out. But they were with him. Uh, some of them that were with him, they loved him. Amen. So everybody there wasn't against him. God always, you, you're never alone. He always has somebody with you. He is with you. Amen. Amen. Wow. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Then they offered him wine mixed with, mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him, dividing up his clothes. They cast lots to see what each one would get. I mean, it, you know, people go into doing what they usually do, you know. A uh, family member might come and say, well, my, my loved one had such and such. And they lie, no, they didn't have that. Uh, well, yeah, they did have that. <laughs> Y'all done cast lots and took it. <laughs> you cast lots to see what each one will get. <laughs> Amen. Oh, uh, just uh, uh, people, there are some that, that don't have com compassion. Uh, they don't know how to love. They don't know how to look at uh, something and say that's life. You know, that person is, that, that's another human being. They, they can do anything to that person and hurt that person and all of that and not feel any kind of remorse or anything like that. Um, verse 25, Mark 15. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read the king of the Jews, mm. which was true. He's king of the Jews, king of us all. And they crucified two rebels with him, one on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, I mean, they had him on show, you know? Our God, you know, on, on the exhibit, People passing by to see and to to yell out whatever it is that they wanted to say uh, to him. Mm. Mm. You're gonna eat those words, and I'm not saying that just you know like God gonna get back to him. But the things that we do are written down. Things that we 
say are written down. Hmm. And so they, they would pass by and they, they're saying, so you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. So they're making statements of mockery and not realizing that he's talking about the temple was his body. That he's, he's, he's coming back in three days. He's rising from the dead. And uh, what it say in Revelation that every eye of the person is going to see. <laughs> they're going to see. Amen. But in the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. And that, that is just, I mean, some of the things that you hear that leaders do, is, it's like, how, how can they do that? When, if you're wearing uh, uh, the cloth, uh, or you are a man or a woman of God, how can you do that? How can you knowingly uh, know from the scriptures uh, uh, that that is wrong and continue to do that? How can you... Uh, 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 um, Make up false accusations and say false things to get money or, or, or have an affair. How, how can you do that? How, how can you do that? And it's not that, that we put you, uh, put leaders on, on, a, on a high level. God has put you on that level. Because you are supposed to be a light, a guide to those that are lost. You're supposed to be a shepherd that is leading the flock. But if you take an advantage of the flock, that, that's not right. And that's what the chief priests and these leaders, and they, they, they were doing. They were looking out for themselves. They liked that. They liked standing in the synagogue, and they liked standing in the places with their robes flowing and, and people acknowledging who they are. But their hearts were far from God. Because if your heart is with God, you would have been one that ran up there and said, uh, uh, no, 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 don't crucify him. Your heart would have been changed. See, we look at Judas and how Judas walked with him, and uh, his heart was not changed. But when you look at the, these priests, the, these teachers of the, of the law, these elders, you look at them, they're supposed to be men of God. Watching over the people. Protecting the people, guiding the people. And they're all in it for their own selfish gain. They're coming together and having meetings about Jesus. What are we going to do? It's not, that's not right. So we have to be careful when we're in a position of leadership to do what is right. Be, let the Holy Spirit convict you. Don't uh, override him. If you've got a drug problem or something, get the help. We know that leaders are human. 